Hello everybody and welcome to Lauren Loves Color. This is Lauren. I am so excited. It is April. It is the end of April. Oh my gosh. I feel like I finally made it. This has been a tough month for me. I was sick. My daughter was sick. My husband was sick. Um, my daughter hadn't been sleeping through the night. I was in the middle of performance reviews with my team and gosh, it has been a whirlwind. But I am so excited to tell you I am finally on kind of over the hill with a lot of that. We're all feeling better. My daughter is sleeping through the night. My performance evaluations are final and done and so I feel like I get a little bit of reprieve and I feel like I finally can get a little bit back to normal hallelujah so this is the perfect kickoff um, to kind of just getting back into the swing of things for me um, is my April haul. I, I will say um, this is just astounding to me. When I was pulling everything together to figure out what I needed to film for this haul, I was just in total shock. Um, I will tell you the vast majority of this stuff was things that I did not buy. Um, they were either gifted to me from publishers or from some lovely subscribers. So um, so I, I'm just... I'm, I'm just astounded. I just can't believe the stack of massive, I mean, massive amount of books that I have sitting next to me. This has got to be at least 15 books. Um, so we have a lot to get through today. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to move all of the books off to the side. We will do that last. Let's get to some of the really exciting supplies. Oops. See, I'm just knocking stuff over as I'm going. So let's start with these, Distress Oxides. So Alicia um, from Captured Moments page paper crafts. Um, she was the one to turn me on to these. So many of you have probably seen me use Distress Inks in some of my books and um, love Distress Inks. They're beautiful, but the thing that I don't like about them is how bold they are. And a lot of times I want just a really, really subtle kind of pastel-y soft background. And so what she suggested was to move to Distress Oxides and try these instead. So these only come in the big tins. They don't come in the smaller tins. These are also by Ranger. Um, they look like this. And they do create a more kind of like diffuse, subtle effect. I got this set off of Amazon. They sell them in packs of four. They sell like massive packs of them. They have a whole bunch of different ones. I have not used this in um, a coloring page yet, but I plan on doing so very soon. I have played around with them on some scrap paper, and I do really, really, really like the effect of these. So these might be what I use moving forward. Um, my Distress Inks are great, and I will still use those as well, but it's kind of for a different type of look, something a little bit more bold. Um, so if you want something that's a little bit more subtle, these are great. I did have these swatched on a sheet of paper that I was going to show you, but then I used it as a blotter page so it has alcohol mark all over it so unfortunately I can't show you what these colors look like um, but they're really nice and subtle and you can find um, swatches of these like when you like Google online um, you'll see them and uh, the four uh, colors I have here are speckled egg shaded lilac tattered rose and bundled sage all right I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put all this stuff Okay, next are also some additional items for backgrounds. So these are a couple of really kind of affordable um, options, and these are Crayola products. One are these confetti crayons. I've seen a couple of people use these. Um, these are great for backgrounds because they kind of are different colors as you color. So if you're doing something like water or sand or um, any kind of background, um, these are really, really great because they are just a variety of different colors in one crayon. This is what they look like inside, and I don't know about you, but the one thing that kind of shocked me is that there's not very many, like, colors. Let me see if I can get my camera to actually focus. I don't know if it's going to focus on these or not. Um, but basically, the thing is, is that there's so many here that actually look kind of white um, on the tip, so you kind of have to swatch them out a little bit, and so I've kind of drawn on some scrap paper just to see what colors come out of them, and then also the names can kind of hint them to can kind of hint it to you like this one is called um, 4th of July and so obviously that one's going to be red white and blue um, but there's not as many like unique colors as I thought there would be in here there's not like I thought there'd be a whole bunch of different like reds and greens and blues and yellows and there's really really not so there's not a huge variety in these but these are also um, really really kind of cool to play around with so and they're in Crayola crayons I mean they're they're super cheap they were probably like two dollars or three dollars at most um 
Next, this is what I saw Nisi use. Dollar Diva 99 turned me on to these. This is just Crayola drawing chalk. And so this is a set of 12. And if I can open them, these are the colors that, whoops, that come in here. And what you can use for these is you can use these as backgrounds. Um, and so I actually did this um, on a coloring page. You can just color directly on the page itself, or you can um, take a X-Acto knife and kind of shave some off to a page and then spread it around um, with your finger. You definitely need to use Fix-A-Dip for these, but these definitely provide a really kind of nice pastel effect. They're super affordable and cheap. I have used them and I do like them. So um, this was also a really good investment. I've used these on some backgrounds already. Um, for that, if you're looking for something to actually fix your page, you're going to need something like a workable fixative. For the Jane Davenport pastels um, and for the Crayola chalk pastels, you definitely, definitely need to spray your page or else it's going to rub off over time or rub off on your hands. Um, I did find that with both the Jane Davenport pastels and with the Crayola chalk. I haven't used this yet to fix the pages. I have heard that it's rather stinky, um, but I did buy this. You just have to make sure you use it outdoors so eventually when I have some time maybe I'll do that this afternoon um take my book out and spray it and um it will just kind of keep keep that background on the page I've also Shana and Colorland also did a um tutorial on this or kind of like a demo you can spray this on your page let it dry and then when you use water markers it's less streaky so I haven't tried that yet but I decided this was pretty inexpensive as well and it was worth using especially since I'm going to be doing more and have been enjoying doing some more backgrounds and things in my um um in my books All right, the next thing that I have here are some Copic additions. So I did get some additional Copic markers. I don't remember which ones I got, but I now have a set that is compatible with all of my color by number books, the major publishers like Belba, Sun Life, Kira. Um, Kira and Sun Life have the same color palette. Um, such and Such Diva, um, Sun Life Drawing, etc. So these are... Whoop. These are all of the colors now that I have. I think I have close to 50 different colors, um, but these are the colors that I use. I added some colors here, but like I said, I just don't remember which colors that I ended up getting, but I now have what I consider kind of my complete set um, of Copics. I've had a few people um, message me about my Copic markers and what I use for um, to match different color by number books, and um, I do have that. It's all written down on these pages now. I do plan on putting these in my color charts that's on my link tree and adding it to there. Um, I think I only have my Copic matches for uh, Such and Such Diva listed up there right now, but um, I plan on putting them in for all of the publishers. I just haven't had enough time to do that yet. Um, but if you're ever interested, even though I don't have it up there, I'm happy to just send you screenshots um, of whatever I have. I have Sun Life Drawing. I have Color Questopia. I mean, or you can screenshot these right now. Here's Such and Such Diva. Here is Jade Summer, and it's just kind of messy because I have like writing in circles. What I have circled um, is is my actual color match, and then here is Belva Family. So those are my Copic matches, and you'll see some of these. I swatched like two or three different markers because I wasn't sure exactly which was going to match, but um, I think I have it all kind of figured out now. So I store this in here. This case is also new. Um, I like it because it has like a little pocket here. I was keeping my Copics in something like this, but what I was finding was because of so many that I had, it became very cumbersome to try to find what I was looking for. So I got this case instead. This is really nice. It has a zipper pocket um, on the back in case you want to store extra supplies um, or like marker nibs or whatever you want to do um, refills and then it has slots this is actually I think intended to be like a cosmetic lipstick case and it's a little I would say it's a little big for the markers but it's not bad it keeps them from sliding out I think this holds up to 70 60 something like that number of markers but it's really nice it allows me to kind of store them on their side um, I did have a subscriber tell me you actually don't have to store Copic markers on their side um but I just do that I you know that's kind of how I store all my alcohol markers um and it also has this nice little handle here they come in a variety of different colors so this is a really nice marker case if you're looking for a way to store your Copic markers um 
You could even store regular markers in here. It would have to be the fatter markers like the Cali Arts. Um, I don't know if Ohuhu's, they might be, I don't know, they're about the same size as a Copic. Um, they would probably do well in here too if you wanted to store your markers that way and you'd like to keep them organized. Um, also kind of what you saw is a sneak peek of these. These are what the Copic ink refills look like now. They used to look different than this. Um, they used to be these kind of like larger um, refills and so this is apparently what they look like now. This is their new packaging and I have used these a lot. Um, I actually just ordered some more um, because I've ha been having to refill my Copics a lot because I've been I've been using them a ton. So I already feel like I'm getting some of my money's worth out of my Copics. Um, I'm going to just demo for you very, very quickly if I can get this together. Let's find... I'm working on my color by color stained glass mandala book. I'm going to finish this book. I am determined. By the end of April, I'm going to finish this book. I just want to show you guys how this works really quick because for those who have Copic markers, you might be interested to know like how you actually refill them. Um, so let's grab G17 because that's the one that I have here. So all you need to do, and this is what I like about Copics, is that they are refillable. Um, and so this marker here, this is the G17 refill um, for the Copic marker. And all you have to do is pull out the um, chisel nib. I have like a little tweezer. This is the official Copic tweezer, but you can use whatever tweezer you want. And you see how it has a little hole on the top? All you're going to do is unscrew the top of this Copic refill, and it's got this little kind of pipette nozzle, and all you have to do is put that in here and then just squeeze. I'm not going to do it now because this one's actually full. Um, just squeeze this until you feel like you want to. The thing is, is that there's no real gauge to tell you like how much to put in there. There are some little tick marks here. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the side of the barrel, um, just so you can see like, well, how much ink you still have left. And so I usually do one line and a dot um, down to refill my marker completely, but it's really just going to depend upon um, how much ink you know, you have left in your marker itself. You then put your chisel back down. It usually takes, I usually just leave it on its side and give it about maybe a good five minutes. Um, and then usually the marker is, I'm trying to make sure it's not bleeding through. Usually the marker then is ready to go. So it's, um, it's very, very easy to refill them. Um, I have refilled probably five or six different markers now. I refilled definitely this G17 um, twice, I think at least. Um, I seem to use green a lot. So, um, yeah, these refills are great. These refills are about $5.30 a piece. There are two places that I get my Copic markers and my ink. I will um, link the information to both of those places down below in case you're interested. I had a subscriber recommend to me um, Otaku Fuel, um, and I will say they are the best. They have, I think, the best shipping. They're super, super fast with their shipping. Their prices are heavily... Um, affordable and, and reasonable for Copic markers and um, their customer service is fantastic. So I would highly recommend them. Um, Dick Blick is the other place that I get them and they're okay. I've had a couple of I guess le less than optimal experiences with them, but ultimately in the end it always worked out. It just, it was hard. I use both of them because sometimes one has certain colors in stock and one doesn't, but um, that's besides the point. So if you have any questions about Copic, just let me know. Let's talk about books. So let's go through some happy mail first. I just got these in the past um, couple of days. This was a lovely, lovely gift. Lovely, lovely gift from Anne. Um, Anne from A Colorful Life. She um, so kindly gifted me um, these books. And um, I guess had watched my videos and sent me just a really, really nice um nice note. And um, I had seen these on another um, Color Troopers uh, a video, and I don't remember who it was. Was it the Coloring Diva? It might have been you. Um, I think that I saw some of these books featured. And I thought these were really cute. They're really inexpensive. They're like maybe $2 a piece. Um, and so uh, uh, she sent me these books to color in, and so I thought these were really cool. What's interesting about them is that they are vellum, 
so they are see-through. Um, so they're intended to be like, you know, you can cut them out and hang them in a window, kind of like a stained glass look. There's only about eight pages in each book, but they're like $1.99 a piece. And they have a whole bunch of different kinds. They have winter themed ones, Halloween, um, fairies, princesses. I mean, from like whatever you can imagine all you have to search are like Dover little activity books and there's a million of them so I got this um kaleidoscope one she got me this one that's these little hearts as well which is really cute I'll just flip through a couple of these pages so those are really cool this one which is cool these last two are really neat so this one is butterflies it's got a whole bunch of different butterflies but what you actually will see is in the very back of the book it says how to color them so if you don't know like what type of butterfly it is and how you want to color the butterfly you actually can see the information um, in the very back of the book this book is exactly the same this is the wildflowers book and so this one and this one this the front cover is just a little bit bent but it actually didn't affect any of the pages which was great so um this one too is the same situation where in the very very back of the book it has here the um, names of the flowers and then how you can color the flowers so you can choose to color them that way or choose not to color them that way but um you've got at least a little suggestion for how to color some of these books so thank you thank you thank you so much to Anne. that was so kind and so sweet and i know that she just left a um really heartfelt video that she is what i hope is just taking a break from youtube it sounds like she doesn't really have a start date to come back, but I have so gratefully enjoyed her content. She honestly was one of the biggest people to inspire me to restart my YouTube. Um, so I'm so grateful for her. She still has a Facebook group, which I will link down below. Um, if you are interested in maintaining contact with her, um, she's just wonderful, but she's also just hilarious and just a really kind and, and wonderful spirit. So thank you, Anne, for um, gifting these to me. I greatly appreciate it. Also, I got an extremely generous gift. This is from Amanda Downey. Um, she is a frequent buddy colorer with me on um, Instagram, and so I will also link her down below. You need to go and check her out on Instagram. She's absolutely phenomenal. She so kindly just gifted me these books too, um, just as an appreciation. It was amazing. I got these books and the books from Anne literally just a day apart from each other and I was just overwhelmed I I walked outside and my husband was like are you ordering more books and I was like no no I'm not ordering more books and um they were gifts from wonderful and lovely subscribers and so I'm so excited I don't have any of these books these are the Camellia Angelkova miniatures books these are three of them the new oceans miniature book which I think is going to be by far my favorite um which is surprising because I'm not huge into ocean themes but I absolutely love this book everybody has seen flip throughs of this I'm not gonna flip through it unless unless I get a request below um but I absolutely love the images in this book I think they're just fantastic I may do a flip through on Instagram maybe I'll do that but I need to do a buddy color stat in these books um because they're so so cute um so I have the oceans book she also gifted me the 50 summer miniatures book um which also I mean like oh my gosh you know how I love to color food um there are just some really really fantastic images in here and I cannot wait to get started I'm a little bit surprised I thought the line work would be a little bit thicker than what it is so I think if I I'm gonna have to use like my Teo tree markers and be a little bit um careful with some of these but I've seen Danielle and other people color out of them and these seem to work just fine with alcohol markers so um yeah and then this is the spring miniatures one so she kind of gave me one for our current season the upcoming season and then the newest book and so um I'm so 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 excited so thank you very much Amanda this was so kind of you to do this and um I look forward to more buddy colors this was this was a really really fun surprise where am I gonna put all these books I'll put them down here all right, Color Questopia. Let's get, let's do publishers together. Can I do that? Is this going to take me too long? Who knows? 
Colorquestopia. These are the books that I have from Colorquestopia. These are their th three newest releases. Um, they actually just have a another new one, which is kind of like their best hits. Their, I forget what they call it. Um, 50 of their best hits um, from a um, um, from all of their books. And so um, that one will be coming in the mail to me too. But this one, um, this is their Mandela book. It's a really fantastic book. This one has 35 images instead of the um, standard 20 images that they have. It's with their new color palette. It's really fantastic. And I was trying to be sneaky about my page, but I already showed this in my review of this book. So this is the page I completed. I absolutely love this book. I think this is a a fantastic one to get if you like um, mandalas and color by number. This is their inspirational quotes book. This one is also great. This is the page that I did here. This one I need to use a fixative on too. What did I use in the background here? Oh, I use the Jane Davenport pan pastels um, in this one. So uh, this book is um, also really great. It's got a wide variety of different types of images in here. Um, so really great book from Color Questopia. Um, really just kind of neat and unique for them. Last but not least is their mom. It's their Mother's Day coloring book. So this one's also really fun. It's got like animals. It's got patterns and designs, landscape. I mean, it's kind of got it all. Um, and then this was the image that I colored in here, just in the likeness of me and my daughter, Emma, for Mother's Day. I changed some of the colors on here, but I do really like how this turned out. So this is really fun. So those are the three new books from Color Questopia that I got. Ugh, I need to reposition. Um, next is going to be Belba Family, and I know I have that one, and I think there's one more that they released this month. Yes. So they released two books this month. Um, the very first one is their 3x3 three three Pixels. This is their Wow Africa book. I had completed one page for this back in March. I know I've turned it in my completed pages. It looks like this. I use the dot method here, which I don't think is my favorite for these types of books, but it's their standard very, very small um, squares um, for for their kind of pixel style books in an Africa theme. I absolutely love the WOW series. Um, I have the WOW animal series. And that's probably my favorite Bubble Family book, but this is probably a close second for the pixel style books just because I really like the types of images um, that are included in here. I think they're really stunning. They're kind of this combination of patterns um, and animals, but just they're each page is slightly unexpected. Um, there's something unique about it that just makes it really fun. So um, these are really cool books to pick out if you like the... Um, mosaic style there. Um, this is my absolute favorite series from Belba Family. This is the Stone Mosaic Book 3. Um, this was one of the images. This is the very first image that I colored here, um, which I love these. These are the, I have the Book 2. I don't have the Book 1. Um, and it just has these like little pebbles um, and you use the color palette to um, color in the numbers. So it's a unique color by number book. Um, and I really, really like this. So I will work on this book after I complete book two, which I'm, I'm close on finishing that. Um, let's hold on her. Let's go to Prachi Dewan Sachdeva, who has these two books. These are, this is her newest release. And then this is an older release. This is the Love For You book. This book is amazing. I do not hear enough people talk about this book. Um, it's got a lot of really, really cute color by number images that are very unique and different. It's all about love. Um, it's just really fun, bright and colorful. This is a really great book. Um, so this was sent to me by her. This was the page that I completed, which is so cute. Look at those two little bears. Um, I love it. I think it just looks really cute and just a really, really fun book. Next is Unicorn Color by Number. This is an older book, um, but one that um, that I kind of picked out and she sent to me. So um, this one has a whole bunch of different unicorn pages. Um, really, really fun um, unicorns um, just doing different kind of human and non-human things. So this is just, a, I, I love unicorns. They're my favorite kind of fantasy animal. So um, thank you to Prachi for giving me this book too, because this was a really, really fantastic book. Let's look at her husband's books that I have. So for Sachin Sachdeva, 
these are three books that I have from him. So this very first one is Stained Glass Nautical Designs. This is a new series by him. So we will see more stained glass um, books from him, which I really, really like this style. Um, they're a more simple color by number book, but to me, they inspire some creativity. So I've taken some creative liberties with some of this. I use a lot of stickles. I do a lot of outlining and things in this book. And so um, you guys will see some of that on my completed pages. I'm really, really happy with how my images have turned out in this book um, and think this is a lot of fun. The images look simple, but then once you actually color them, they're so bright and so colorful and so beautiful. So I'm really, really happy with this book. Next, one of his probably more popular books. This is 50 Diamond Mandalas Color by Number. Um, this is 50 unique images of Color by Number Mandalas, and they're in this diamond and gemstone patterns. Um, you will have seen a ton of people, I'm sure, flip through this book. Um, everybody seems to really love it. They're very, very bright and colorful. Um, so I'm really, really happy with this book and just the way that the images turn out. Like here's an example of one um, that I did with some glitter gel pen and then some of my markers and oh my gosh I just I love 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 how these turn out and can't wait to do some more in here so this is a really fantastic new release from him also, this is his mermaid book, an older book um, that was so kindly gifted to me by him as well. Um, this is mermaid color by number. And so this has, um, again, kind of like the unicorn book. It's a kind of moderate, um, um, moderately difficult color by number book, a little bit more of a standard color by number um, with just different really cute images of mermaids. Um, a little bit more detail. It takes a little bit more time, um, but I just thought this was perfect for summer. So this is really great and a really good book by him. I've seen a lot of people coloring in this book lately. Um, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get a copy for myself because it's it's really fantastic. So um, really, really great book. Staying on the mermaid theme, this is the Sun Life Drawing Mermaids book. Um, so this is the next in their stained glass color by number series. So this is their stained glass um, color by number. And so it goes along with a lot of the, the there's World of Mice, there's a little witches. There's a whole bunch in this series. And so I love the images in here. These are a little bit more simple than their prior books. It doesn't have a lot of background. And I actually don't mind that at all because especially on books like this where it's water, I feel like if they did a lot of background, the background would just be blue. And so um, I really appreciate that this was a little bit of a different style um, and really like this one. This is probably... This might be my favorite from the stained glass series. So I plan on doing more in here, especially as it gets closer and closer to summer and gets a little hotter outside. So this is a really fun one to color in. Next, I'm going to talk about Kira Shershneva. Um, This lady has been extremely busy in her Color by Color series. This was the latest addition to my collection. This is Woman's World. I've done some different images in here. I did a flip through um, of this one as well. I think I've done a total of two images in here. Um, I can't remember. But um, yeah, so this is a really, really, really fun and just beautiful book. And uh, Copics, my Copics work really great in here. You can use any kind of marker that you want, any kind of alcohol marker, water marker. It's just colored pencil doesn't work really well um, on this paper. But I highly recommend this book. Um, this will probably be the next book that I work on after I finish the Mandela book because this is probably my next favorite um, in her series. And she's coming out, she came out with a Tetris one. She's about to come out with a summer one. So that color by color series is just really taken, um, taken flight. Um, this is the Animal Spark 2 book. You saw this in some of my completed pages. This was just kind of a silly buy. Um, a whole bunch of different animals passing gas. That is what it is. This was my completed page from last month was this panda. I haven't worked any further in here yet. I'm massively failing my own hashtag, which is April Animal Coloring. I feel like I've colored mostly people in patterns um, this entire month. But um, regardless, um, maybe I can get at least one more page done in here. Uh, my parrot uh, would be next. So we'll see. Um whether or not I can get some more done in here this month. We're kind of wrapping up this month, and so um We'll see. I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to get done. I'm tired. <laughs> 
Um, last but certainly not least, this is my Eerie Trace Around the World series. I've done a flip through of this book as well. This is a really neat book. The idea is just to trace the images. These were the ones I showed in my last month. Um, completed pages, Easter, and then a cut like dog sledding and um, St. Patrick's Day. This book actually goes in order by the seasons. Um, so they have at the very beginning of the book what to do for April. And so my plan was to color the kind of color this throughout each season. Um, but I just don't know that I'm going to be able to complete these pages um, this month. Um, that might be something I have to kind of color like one page a month or something out of this book. But um, I do really love this book and, and think it's been a really, really good buy. Last but certainly not least was kind of a freebie for me um, in this binder here. If you don't follow Kira Church Neva on social media, you really should. Um, what I decided to do was to look at um, her website. So she has on at kiracoloring.com, and I will leave that link down below. She seems to release a lot of her books for free um, as a PDF version. So if maybe you want to try something and you're not sure that you want to actually buy the book um, or you just want to wait on it, you can actually go to her website and um, she releases a lot of books for free. This book, this Mystery Spots book, I don't have a book like this, and so I've never tried it, but it's been on my wish list on Amazon. She just came out with it um, in a free PDF version, so I just printed it out. It's just on regular copy paper. I just put them in some sheet protectors and in this binder. I already had all of this at home, and I just thought, like, you know, this is a way for me to try it out and to see if I like it, and maybe if I feel like I want to get the physical copy of the book that I can but um honestly like for for this um for this book I don't necessarily feel like it matters the quality of the paper and certainly many of you probably have cardstock at your home and can just print these out on cardstock and not even have to worry about it so um yeah so I'm gonna give it a shot um but yeah all of the images are here and um yeah I just figure I will I'm going to give it a shot. I also just keep my cup, my Copic color chart um, in the front of this binder. So that is all that I have for you today. Are you exhausted? I feel like I'm exhausted. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this haul. I hope everybody's having a great week. And I will see you all again next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.